This is the strength or resistance training portion of the program. We want to remember the essentials and the guidelines of strength training in terms of one movement is a rep, a group of reps is a set. We work from five to 15 reps. Five to eight would be more on the strength side of the continuum. Eight to 12 is a blend of strength and muscle endurance. And then 12 to 15 is more on the side of muscle endurance. However, no matter how many reps we're performing in an exercise, the last repetition, we should get to fatigue and be unable to perform that. And throughout the exercise, remember that form follows function, maintain that, take the exercise to full fatigue, and that's where fitness occurs. That's how we get more fit, we'll have more muscular strength, more muscular endurance when we follow those proper guidelines in the gym. In this video, we're gonna be looking at squats and squatting progressions. Squatting is one of the five primal human movement patterns. When we squat, there is flexion at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. So it's a multi-joint exercise. It's a tremendous core activator, and there's a lot of core control in squatting. It builds excellent levels of strength, muscle endurance, and it builds better levels of stability and balance, and also helps build the platform for power exercises like the kettlebell swings. If you don't have a good squat and a good deadlifting uh, pattern, kettlebell swings are really not an accessible power exercise at that point in time. We also want to remember that when we squat, the feet, the tibia, so the center of the ankle, the second and the third toe, and the knee all need to track straight ahead. So generally, we'll turn the feet slightly out, and you want both feet to do the same thing. So then as I squat down, my knees are following the line of my feet. The most common mistake that I see is because of a medial inclination or pronation at the subtalar joint, and remember our discussion that the subtalar joint is down here, right below the talus or the ankle joint. And when that caves in, the likelihood is that the kinetic pattern follows and the knees dive in. So the squatting progression, the corrective exercises of the squat should ideally train the client to track the knee and the feet in the same pattern and will help to correct that dysfunctional pattern. We'll get started with a basic wall sit. So I walk the feet forward, drop down, knees directly over the ankle joint, press back into the wall, pull the core in, lift the chest up, and then I use a yoga block so that we get that tracking of the knee to be proper and that the form is excellent and then the client can feel the quadricep muscles working, the butt muscles working, and the core being activated so that there's a sinking of upper body and lower body working together. And then you can hold this anywhere from 15, 30 seconds or beyond and do two repetitions or three repetitions of that. So that's a wall sit. Then we progress to forms of supported squats. So I'm going to pretend that this is a, the side of the golf cart or the side of a machine in the gym. And I grab with my hands about the height of the sternum or so, and then I begin to sink into the squat. And I'm looking for the knee and the foot to track in the same line and the hips to drop and they're not to be a rounding of the spine that's a neutral spine 
and we make that figure four as we drop down into the full phase of the squat. So that's one form of a supported squat. Another form is what's called the TRX, which is a suspension trainer. I've got one here. I've got it anchored. And get the arms in the proper position, about the height of the shoulders, have some tension. I'm going to inch in a little bit and then sink. Now this should allow the client to feel a comfortable level of flexibility and mobility because of the support. Same thing though, we want the knees, the feet to track straight in line with one another. And usually a client can go a little deeper in this form of a squat, which is good for increasing flexibility and mobility and also allowing that feeling of where the actual sit comes from and goes to because of the support. So that's a TRX or a suspension trainer squat. From there, we move to ball at the wall squat. So I've got a stability ball. Cover the curve of the lumbar spine. Step the feet forward, measure it off, do one. See that the knee is right over the ankle. Pull the core in and then start to sink. And again, we're looking for knees and feet tracking in line with one another. So if a client naturally turns the feet out as they go down, I don't want to see that. I want there to be a tracking and a feeling that there's a proper alignment in all three joints, ankle, knee, and hip. So that's a ball at the wall squat. From there, a body weight squat. Feet in the same position, arms forward, sink. Neutral spine, core activated, body weight squat. You could do it with the arms by the sides to start, and then as you go down, the arms go up. So there's a rhythm to that. So that's a body weight squat. And I see that the mechanics, the biomechanics of the squatting pattern are performing at a good level. Now we can add some resistance. So the first one is a goblet squat. And in the goblet squat, I'm grabbing a kettlebell. If you don't have a kettlebell available, you could grab a dumbbell. Kettlebell is a little better tool for this. It really gets the participant to get in touch with center of gravity moving properly. Turn the feet slightly out, about shoulder width apart. Stand up tall and then descend down with the weight. And when the forearms graze the thighs, the inner thighs, that's the bottom of the movement. And then rise back up. Do the proper amount of repetitions. Take the set to fatigue. And that is the goblet squat. From the goblet squat, we have the suitcase squat with the dumbbells by the sides. So I hold the dumbbells like I'm holding two suitcases. Same thing as the goblet squat, set up the feet about shoulder width apart and then begin to sink. Knees and feet tracking straight ahead. If you're able to, you could place the weights on the shoulder in preparation for a barbell squat and then sink down. Obviously it has to be a weight that you can control and you want to be comfortable putting the load on the shoulder area and that you're not getting when you go down 
a rounding of the spine. And we don't have a barbell in this gym, but we do have a body weight bar, which will mimic the barbell. So if I had a barbell, it'd be a squat rack. I would walk under the squat rack and the bar would be placed on the upper edge of the collarbones or the top ridge of the scapula. Comfortable position, get set. And we want the thoracic spine to stay in extension. So if you've got somebody that's in a kyphotic pattern, this is not a good area to load them. So we need proper posture, proper form, and the proper setup, and then start to sink down. So now we're fully loading the body from top to bottom, performing a barbell squat. It could also be done in front. So we cross the arms, place the barbell here, and then start to sink. And that might be easier for somebody who has a little problem keeping the thoracic spine extended during the squat. So now there's more forms of squats than that, but that is the basic progression. And I like to follow that progression so that the client can move forward and that the form is proper before we load that form. Squatting should be one of your primary leg exercises in the gym. And it builds great strength, muscle endurance. So utilize these principles in the gym when you're squatting and move forward in the patterns of the squat properly. And I guarantee you the legs will get stronger and you're going to generate more force and be able to generate more speed in your golf swing. Those are squatting patterns.